Hi everyone, I am back. I know that you all have been just sitting on the edge of your seats wondering, Ruth, when are you coming back with a video? You said that you are back, but yes, I am back for real. And videos are about to come out back to back or maybe like more like every other two to three days, okay? I'm gonna try my best to shoot videos your way we i have so much things to share with you guys but i have been so busy but i am back for those who are back with me welcome back to the channel i love y'all so so much for our new subscribers my name is ruth naomi mitchell you can call me lady ruth or prophetess ruth it doesn't matter you can tell i'm excited right so let's get to the video all right i am so happy for those who commented expressed you know that they are happy that i'm back if you have not watched my video of me coming back you know talking about what really happened you really need to check that out if you've been wondering but yes i am back and i want to go ahead and answer your questions so i have my other phone here and you ladies have been sending me emails and i have not been the best of responding to them while I was away, but now I'm back and I would love to respond to them via videos. I don't know exactly what to call these videos. I don't know if it should be called letters from the leader's wife. If you have a, a name for the videos that I will be doing in response to you, ministers wives and pastors wives, I don't know, name these videos for me comment below and name the videos for me that I'll be responding um, to when you guys email me because you guys do email me and if you're wondering uh, my email if you'd love to email any questions or if you want to send me an encouragement the email is in the description below okay <laughs> So a pastor's wife sent me this email and as you can see from the title, it's how to enjoy pastoral ministry. So a pastor's wife sent me an email and she was asking me, Ruth, how can I really enjoy this pastoral ministry? So this is the letter she sent to me. Good evening, sister in Christ. I found your YouTube channel and I love your videos and hair products. Hey, <laughs> for those who don't know, we do have our own hair care products. This channel basically started because of hair care. And as we grew, we grew in different, you know, areas. But if you do want to support this channel, definitely check out Maximize Your Hair Growth, which is our hair care company. We are known for growing hair like crazy. Okay, check that out. Back to the letter. So she said i have a question as a pastor's wife how to enjoy the pastoral ministry or what what's the some what are some of the ways tips to enjoy the ministry looking forward to hearing from you god bless all right so this topic has several topics inside i'm trying not to do an extensive and then i'm trying not to do an extensive teaching but this topic is really really deep there are several ways on several things that i could expound on i'm just going to expound on four different things so this is my suggestion and i'm looking down because i'm looking on my phone and i really really hope that this blesses a pastor's wife out there that's just really been feeling you know like they're not enjoying this pastoral ministry they're not enjoying being a pastor's wife they're not enjoying just being at church overall because i know how that can feel it's not a good feeling it's not a healthy feeling but i really hope that this encourage you if you're experiencing this if you're a minister's wife and you're also experiencing this this also may help you i know it might be different because you're a minister's wife and a minister's wife is different than a pastor's wife but send this to your pastor send this to your pastor okay um all right so let's get into it the holy spirit particularly led me to do this video out of all the other videos that i could do about you know to encourage the pastor's wives different topics that i really want to address for the ministers and pastor's wives god really led me to do this video and 
I want to say this. You have to get the right people with you. It is very important for you to get the right people. And this is scriptural. When God was building his team, he ensured that he had the people that were willing to sacrifice things, willing to sacrifice their time. I mean, when you look in the gospels of Jesus Christ, when Jesus went about to get the disciples, hallelujah, his team together, he went out, for instance, he went out, some of them were fishermen, some of them, you know, were doing their regular work. But as God met them, as Jesus met them, they literally left what they were doing. They left their jobs. They left their fishing jobs. They left what they were doing to come and serve Jesus. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going into an extensive teaching here, but you have to be intentional about getting the right people. For those who weren't willing to put down what they were doing, leave the boat, leave their nets, leave their families, oh, leave you know the distractions, oh, and follow Jesus, they could not come with him. They could not be his disciples. So one of the key ingredients in enjoying your pastoral ministry as a pastor's wife and even as a pastor. Share this with your bishop, your pastor, because there's so much leaders, so much bishops, pastors that are not enjoying, so much prophets that are not enjoying the ministry that God has given them. And that should not be so. A key ingredient is to ensure that you choose the right disciples, choose the right servants, choose the right Right leaders, if they are not willing to give, oh riba shata. You see, many times the the calling, the anointing on our lives will attract the wrong people. But it's your duty to to, to select the right people. Now, many of you may say, well. Jesus ended up choosing some 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 disciples that that falter in character, but we will go in that a second, all right, in a few. So just just bear with me and really think about it. You cannot just choose people that are just attracted to the call. They're just attracted to the prophecy. They're just attracted to the healing and the deliverance that God is using you to do. Literally choose the right people. Choose the right people. When they are attracted to you, cipher them out or sift them out. Figure them out. Look at their character. Judge them accordingly. If they're not willing to drop what they're doing to serve, then you will not have someone that is going to serve you because if they don't get that, <laughs> if they don't get the principle of honor and serving, ah, this goes so deep, y'all. This goes so deep. It's not everybody that is attracted to you is going to be willing to serve you. Some people just want to pull from you. Some people just want to take, but they don't want to give. So it is your duty to choose the right people. Don't choose somebody because they're your best friend. Don't choose somebody because you know them years ago. Don't choose somebody because they helped you in ministry, in your past ministry. My God, choose the right people. Choose the ones that God has specifically sent to you. And you will know when God has sent people to you because you don't have to explain things to them. They gradually graduate. They um, graduate. Is that the word? Gra um, they, no they just naturally pull to you. They naturally uh, pull to you. They naturally know, you know, exactly what to do for the most part of it they flow with you you don't have to explain a b c d e f g yes you have to do training that's the next thing that i want to get into the second thing that i want to get into train them teach them to honor you teach them how to honor you Okay, teach them how to first honor God and in return, they will honor you. And this is something that you should teach your church in overall. <laughs> you see, the people of God, 
we think that we, because we have the Holy Ghost and because we're baptized, that we have access and rights to things and so forth. But it's very important for you all, you know, as pastors, as pastors' wives, to identify your people. And I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. For those who are pastors, pastors' wives, leaders' wives, I'm telling you, share this with a pastor. It is very important for you to identify the right people, the people that God has for you. And I'm going to show you in scripture where this is. God has impressed this upon my heart. God has revealed this scripture in a different light to me, you know, as I have been studying accordingly. Um, John 17, it simply says, and remember, the we want to learn as pastors wives as ministers wives how to enjoy this 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 ministry how to enjoy this pastoral ministry how to enjoy serving as a leader and i think this is primarily really for pastors, bishops that are out there and their wives. But let me get into the word. John 17 says, I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now, they know that everything I have is a gift from you. Verse 8 says, For I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you. And they believe you sent me. My prayer is not for the world, but for those you have given me, O Ribashata, because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you, O Hallelujah, and you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. This is John 17 from the NLT version. Key text, my prayer is not for the world, this is Jesus' prayer here, okay? Jesus speaking here. But for those you have given me, because they belong to you, there are people out there that God has already given to you, pastors and pastors' wives. There are people, there are leaders out there that God has already given to you, mighty God. And hear this. But for those you have given me, let me go back. My prayer is not for the world. So you notice Jesus' prayer is not for the world here. <laughs> and you might say, well, those who are helping me to lead, they're not, of, they're, they're, they're not in the world. But can I just burst your bubble here and tell you they might be off the world for real? Because if they can't come in alignment, if they can't subject to you, if you ask them to do something and they can't do it, then they're off the world. Something is wrong. That's the problem. Some of these leaders that, you know, many pastors have found themselves with, they weren't given to them. They were just chosen by you because you were in the flesh. You didn't fast. You didn't pray. You didn't seek God. You see the dirty characters, but yet you still. You still using them. Oh, Riba Shataya. Oh, mighty God. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. I don't want to necessarily say what God has just brought before me because there are some people that are inside your ministry. They are adulterers and adulteresses, but yet you hang on to them and they're not trying to change. Oh, Riba Shata. No, they might not be sleeping with somebody that is not their husband and wife, but they're prostituting the gospel. Almighty oh, God. They are prostituting the word of God. They're prostituting the things of God, but yet they are still there serving on your staff how do you expect to have enjoyment how do you expect 
to enjoy what God has called you to do if you have the wrong people with you. And for some of them, you facilitate them. But I pray if you are a pastor or a minister, oh God Almighty, a bishop wise, I just pray that this convict you. That is not, this is not to condemn you, but this is to open up your eyes. It is time to make a change. It is time to walk in the will of God. <laughs> that is the other part. That is um, actually my, my third one. Do the will of God. The will of God brings joy. If you're not having joy, you're not in the will of God. There's something that is wrong. I want you to listen to me real good. If you are really, you can't stand going to church as a pastor's wife. You cannot stand going to church as a bishop wife. You cannot stand serving the people. You're having to complain and complain and complain. When Moses was complaining about the people, because he was tired of them, they were taking up things, making idols, making images. They were starting to serve false God and gods because why something is wrong when you are not following the will of god something is wrong the children of israel was not following god's will they wasn't even listening to the man of god because something is wrong oh riba shatai I'm going to leave that there <laughs> because I don't want this to end up being a 20 minute sermon, but it's important for you to walk in the will of God, pastors and bishops, wives, stay in the will of God, pastors. It does not matter who is going to be upset. It doesn't matter who is going to vex. It doesn't matter who is going to leave. Who are you trying to please? Is it God or is it man? Because there are consequences that that's why you're living miserable. That's why your marriage is so miserable. It is not because it's God. It is because of it's the flesh. It is you. You've got to make proper decisions. You can't be a pastor's wife. You can't be a pastor and a bishop. And you're, you, you're miserable. You're miserable walking in, in, in your call. You don't even want to see the church door. No, that cannot be the will of God. Mighty God, the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit. Many have churches and it's good to have church and it's good to speak in tongues and it's good to baptize. It's good to fall out in the spirit. It's good to have messages on top of messages. But what about teachings? What about teachings? What about training? What about discipleship? What about training for real? Oh, Riba Shata. When you get a job, you get hired for a job. They don't just fling you on there and don't give you some kind of training. That would be just, you're just setting yourself up. You're just really setting yourself up for failure. Some of you are setting yourself up for failure. Put order in the house. Put order in the house, leaders, mighty God. Now, last but not least, stick to the blueprint. Stick to the blueprint that God has given you. Some of y'all have adopted some ways. It's not the blueprint. It's not the original thing because you have some people that you, oh, riba shataya. You have put on your staff, you've put on your board, and they come with all of these foolishness, foolish ideas, but it sounds so good because it sounds pleasing to pleasing. Oh, stop trying to be men pleasers and be God pleasers. Oh, Riba Shataya. Mighty God. Have people that are on your staff, have leaders that are behind you, that are serving, that are truly of God. They are truly of God, the things of God. <laughs> I really, really hope this is encouraging someone. It's not to put, you know, make you feel any way, but this is to build you. This is to uplift you. I didn't put this in my notes, but I want to leave this. I want to leave this as an additional bonus. Enjoy what God has given you. Enjoy what God has given you. For real, enjoy. Enjoy. 
how to enjoy it. Go out. Go out with your staff. You can't just be church, 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 church. Have you brought your staff out? Have you tell them that you appreciate and love them? For those who are ministers' wives, for those who are ministers out there, because some of y'all are ministers' wives, but you're ministers too, okay? Some of y'all are pastors' wives, but you're also a co-pastor. You're a pastor as well, or you're a prophetess, or you're a minister, or you're an evangelist. Have you put this to your husband as a pastor? Have you have you put this to your um your department? Say, you know what? I'm going to take out my department. I'm going to write them a card. I'm going to give them gift cards. I'm going to give some of them some, you know, money. You never know what they're struggling with. Meet their needs. When you meet their needs and serve them, are you serving them? Are you just expecting them to serve you? When you're not enjoying your pastoral ministry, there is something that is wrong. But I really hope that this blesses you. I really hope that this gives you a different way to look at things. Enjoy it. What do you enjoy doing? Do you enjoy planning tea parties, banquets? Get the people involved. It can't just be church, 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 church. Bring your leaders on a leadership retreat. Impart in them. Fellowship with them. Don't only fellowship with them because it's an event and we're planning an event. Pour into them. Let them feel loved. Let them not feel like they've been overlooked or underlooked, however you want to call it. Because they're also human beings. And when you invest in them, then you can retrieve from them. You cannot take something from them or take something from something when you have not poured into that thing. My God. I really, really hope that this blesses you all. I have to get off of this phone because my phone is overheating because of where it is in the car. But God bless you all. I love you all so much. Comment below if you have any other any other thing that you would like to share with a pastor's wife or a bishop's wife, you know, you being a pastor's wife or a bishop's wife or a minister's wife that you have done for your staff, that you have done for your leaders, that has helped them to be empowered, that has helped them to serve tremendously because it's not all of you that have this problem. I want you to comment below and just really encourage another pastor's wife, you know, another bishop's wife, anything that you have learned over even the years, because some of you guys have just been in this ministry for a very long time serving and you've been successful. I really want you to come below and share your experiences of what have helped you throughout the years of serving as a pastor's wife, you know, even as a minister's wife and uh, be of strength to someone. You never know who is reading. You never know who is looking and who is watching. So courage, encourage our fellow, help me to encourage our fellow pastors and bishops wives and ministers wives. That's basically it you all. I, I love you all so so much. If you have any more letters that you would like to write to me, the email address is below in the description box. Um, the email address is below in the description. Uh, thank you all so 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 much. I'm excited to be back. Look forward to other videos. Um, yeah. That's basically it, guys. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Bye.